as we enter the 2010s, the gaming industry also changed. From premium games to free-to-play games, especially multiplayer ones, are slowly becoming free. Lots of games start hating for that approach, and in 2014, Ace Combat did the same thing. Originally announced in 2013, Ace Combat Infinity was released on May 2014 for the PlayStation 3 as a free-to-download game, meaning players can dive into the fireworks without spending any money. Well, first of all, I didn't really spend too much time on this game back then, so I'm gonna have to rely on my memory and also have to rely on online to give my best shots. So without further ado, let's begin. The game was developed on the same engine they used for Assault Horizon, but the gameplay itself stays true to a classic Ace Combat formula. Controls, presentation, and gameplay remains largely the same, so players will feel right at home. Graphic-wise, it's nothing special considering it's on PlayStation 3, but for its time, it's actually decent enough. New to the game is a mechanic called Tactical Data Link, a feature that was previously used in Assault Horizon. But we don't talk about that game. Upon flying new and allied forces, your plane performance will be boosted. That can work either in single player or multiplayer, which increases some of your plane's stats. And that covers all of the basics for Ace Combat Infinity. Next up, let's talk about the ice cream on top of the cup. There are two core game modes, campaign and multiplayer. In campaign, the story is retold in a similar fashion to Ace Combat game, mainly Ace Combat 4. A meteorite named Ulysses 1984 strikes down on Earth which causes lots of damage. A defense contractor, Winher and Noah Enterprise step in to help rebuild the world. Unfortunately, they weren't happy with how United Nations handles the situation, and thus a war has begun. Both sides start fighting. You play as Reaper, a mercenary pilot in Bone Arrow Squadron, working with your team and other allied forces to counterattack the enemy. There are a total of 8 missions, with most of them taking place in locations that references older Ace Combat game. But since the game takes place on Earth instead of Strange Real, the game wasn't canon to the main story. Furthermore, the game ends on a cliffhanger that will never be continued. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Campaign is where you learn the basics and become better because you will need them in multiplayer, which is the ice cream at the bottom of the cup. This is where you will be spending most of your time. You will be going up against some of the best Infinity players around the world, whether it's just online match or ranking tournament. I asked some of the fans on Reddit about the reason why they like Ace Combat Infinity, and here are the reasons that I managed to compile. First up, Game Mode. There are varieties of mode to choose from that makes up for the replayability. First up, Kawa, a mode where you work together with your teammate in a team to battle against rivals from the opposing team. Your mission is to try to destroy enemies in order to score more points than your rival when the timer runs out. It requires lots of strategies within each teammate, telling each other where to attack where to spread out and where to defend. Your score is based on whether you win or lose and how many targets you destroy. Sometime when you're just done with co-op and ready to call it a day, a special raid would appear randomly which promptly throws you into another battle immediately. You will be facing a large scale enemy in the form of a boss battle. As always, work with your team to destroy more targets than your rival to prevail. These bosses are callbacks from previous Ace Combat games that have different attack patterns to keep players fresh and it can be pretty fun yet intense. I mean just look at this. They really outdo themselves with the boss. The other special raid is in the form of large enemy unit occupying an area and your job is to terminate all of them just like normal co-op. But in my opinion, it doesn't hold a candle to what those big bosses can offer. Next mode is Deathmatch, which consists of two modes. Team Deathmatch is your standard player vs player where you and rival shoot each other down in order to score points. The other mode in Deathmatch is Narrow Fleet Assault. Not only you have to shoot each other down, 
you also have to defend your allied fleet while trying to destroy the rival's one. You know, like capture the base, something like that. The match ends when any side of the fleet got blown up. And finally, ring battle. Every player fly through the rings to score points, and those who got the most points will try to avoid getting shot down because that's how the player loses everything. I don't know about you, but that's my favorite mood in multiplayer. Something about that just felt so exhilarating. And those are the modes available in multiplayer. After looking through the footage and hearing lots of people's opinion, I can see why people love co-op so much. Next up is the progression system, where instead of using money to buy new planes, players will introduce the aircraft tree where they can unlock more items by continuing playing the game. The tree includes planes, skins, parts, and emblems, and that's where tuning comes to play. When you acquire parts, you can tune it with existing plane that you own, but it also comes with a problem. The more you upgrade, the higher the price you need to pay, which can be problematic. But here's the thing, continue to tune the same plane will enable the plane to level up. The more you tune, the more your plane can be powerful. To the point that you can literally use an A10 to take on better planes like F22. I'm serious. There are examples out there where someone used a weaker plane, but because they souped up the plane so much to the point that they can even rival the super plane. Possibilities are endless, and that's how this game can be different compared to other free-to-play games. Speaking of airplane, new craft are added each update. You got your standard planes, you also got planes that came from Ace Combat itself, like the XO2, the CFA, Nosferatu, ADF Falcon. You can even pilot bomber unit. Like, what other combat games let you able to do this? I know Earth Horizon lets you do that for one mission, but we don't talk about that. That experience is surreal. In addition, they also add another special type of plane. Pestle fighters. Yeah, you can even use planes from World War II era to fight the newer ones. P-38 going up against the Sukhoi. Sign me up. Along with the aforementioned level up mechanic, don't get mad if someone else smoke you with the piston fighters. Since the game is free, that means it also comes with its flaw that could potentially ruin the game. First up is sorting view. A common thing you can always see in free-to-play games. There are two examples. Firstly, supply view. Play a single round, wait for hours. Play a second round, wait for hours. And it goes on and on and on. The fact that you can only have fun for a few minutes and then wait for hours just to play for another few minutes is just ridiculous. You can only have 3 supply fuels in the entire game. Once you use all of them, well, tough shit. Wait for 4 hours for a single fuel. Or you know, you could just buy those fuels. Which is what they call stock fuels. Where you can use anytime you want at any moment. You can also earn them from random drops, aka loot boxes, something that never goes away. They are occasionally for sortie, where you have to use more than a single few to join. But don't worry, those events awards the player with better rewards. Speaking of loot box, let's talk about random drops, where player can get a point finishing co-op or team deathmatch. The drop contains rewards like aircraft, emblems, skins, tickets, few supply, credits, just to name a few. The developer even included limited time drops where player can get better rewards from the aforementioned random drops. One of the few notable items are tickets and contract. Contracts can increase player's credit and research report, but the only way to use them is getting through PlayStation Store, and each contract lasts around 12 hours. As for ticket, it allows player to trade rewards at special supply item catalog, similar as the one from random drops. It's just another way to earn rewards. Fortunately, you won't be spending money to buy most of the stuff as the game keeps giving you when you finish the multiplayer events. So it's mostly luck and less gacha moment. As I said earlier, 
The game heavily relies on multiplayer aspect and you might be wondering if people are gonna get bored. But surprisingly, no. Thanks to the co-op being really fun with the innovative aircraft tree coupled by the creative leveling up system, players can find different ways to fight to the top of tournament slash leaderboard. The game is based off previous Ace Combat titles and include multiple easter eggs here and there. Man, I wish I played this even more so that I can understand why people love this game. Unfortunately, the inevitable eventually comes. On December 8, 2017, Bandai Namco announces the game will be closing down on March 31st, 2018. From January 9, 2018, you won't be able to purchase anything from the game. And on March 1st, you can no longer download the game from PlayStation Store. When the news broke out, lots of fans were heartbroken as this game were able to connect the Aces and Nuggets in the Ace Comet series. So many friendship and rivalries were made thanks to this game. So many sweet memories were created with this game. Many new fans were discovered with this game. For all squadrons, this is a sad day in the history of Ace Combat. The fact that the game only runs on an online server and released only on PlayStation 3 means there's no way to even archive the game which really sucks. We just got words from Bandai Namco. Except for some angry fans in the community following the shutdown, there were no chaos among the fans. He was a model fighter that brought Aces together. Join me in saluting Infinity! With the closure of the game, many people turned their vector attention to Ace Combat 7, hoping to actually replicate the experience to continue the legacy. However, it's just not the same. Sure, multiplayer was added, but it only includes Team Deathmatch and Battle Royale. Wait, 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 where the hell is co-op or those fun events that people adore in Infinity? Why didn't they add it? Come on Namco, you can't just do this to your fan. Let's hope they will add it in Ace Combat 8. Please? In the end, Ace Combat Infinity can be said as the game that revolutionized the series. Lots of fans, whether old or new, are able to fly under the same sky. The project is definitely a success, as many people still talk about the game to this very day. Maybe this will be enough to make Bandai Namco understand how important the game is to the community and could bring it back in some way or another. I guess Infinity is dancing with the angels. And that concludes this episode of Ace Combat games that you can never play. In conclusion, there are games that are actually unique that try to do something different. Yeah, including that one. Just like the world of Ace Combat full of experimental aircraft, Namco did the same experimenting with multiple projects that are sadly forgotten by newer hardware. Maybe they will try to make a big collection containing this game in the 30th anniversary. But until that day comes, those story will remain in the missing archive. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy what you see, be sure to like, share and subscribe and comment below what you think. For more updates and stuff, be sure to join my Reddit and Discord.